Caitlin Dennis, uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, congratulations on tomorrow when the world began. You must be very pleased with the way it's, uh, it's turned out. Um, tell us a little bit about the preparations for it. Clearly this um, for a reasonably physical role. Um, what sort of preparations uh, did you have to go in, uh, through before getting onto, onto the set? We do a lot of physical training. Yeah, we did like three weeks of personal training um, before the shoot and a lot of dirt bike uh, weapons training and uh, we went paintballing, which was so we, we, we got ready for war. Which Basically, was great. essentially, yeah. yeah. So we did. And the, nonetheless, what, when, when you got to the set, what, what then did you find the most challenging part of your of your roles in each case? I suppose just trying to team, you know, the physical exhaustion as well as the emotional exhaustion because these are such, you know, the film is set at such harrowing, grim times. Yeah. And then to combine that with, you know, working from 6 pm to 6 am, it was just exhausting. I think for me, I mean, I haven't done a lot, a, much, a lot of screen, so keeping the same intensity throughout so many number of takes and as saying physically and mentally, it, it takes its toll, but also just getting used to the, the grandness of everything. everything so the set's huge, everything, you know, getting thrown into that, it's just all a bit surreal. Now, this is a uh, film is based on, on a book from John Marsden, and I understand he uh, came to the set. Uh, during some of the filming. Can you tell us what your reactions were when, when he arrived? It was kind of, um, it was it was bizarre. Yeah. Because before he came, arrived on set, it hadn't really dawned on us that this was something that existed long before, you know, we were ever attached to it. Well, that's what it was like for me. It was kind of like, my God, I completely forgot the gravity of this project and what it actually means. It was cool that he brought his whole family and he was really blown away by the whole thing and the fact that you know this whole production or the production was based on something that he wrote so many years ago and you know, now we're all working off and making it lively off and so uh, it was very it was very cool to just hang out with and you know it's John Master. I mean <laughs> we're all fans of his book so being an idol and did was there sort of a industry exchanges but in terms of what you were doing the way it should be interpreted anything like that or, or what was his uh take on, on what was going on. He kind of didn't have anything to do with it really in a sense. I mean, because it was it was Stuart's interpretation and therefore Stuart had to, you know, take the reins and really be responsible for everything that happened. I guess he couldn't really go to Jen John for anything. Because yeah. if he did it wouldn't be his work, it'd be, you know, in collaboration with John Marsden. John was great but as far as Stuart was telling us that he was just really trusting with Stuart and I mean with us as well he never it was Stuart guiding us in, through our characters and through the story. It was never John. He completely gave over the story to a Stuart, and Stuart made it uniquely his own, I think. <clears throat> now, talking about Stuart, he, of course, was the screenwriter for the Pirates of the Caribbean films, yeah. amongst other things. Must be quite uh, intimidating to work with someone with such um, extraordinary CV. Well, no, Stuart's never been that person yeah. to us. Even when I went in for my first audition, I hadn't looked him up because. I hate the feeling of walking into an audition room and being, you know, overwhelmed by someone's CV. It, yeah. It's not a nice feeling. So I made a point of not looking him up and I just went in there and it was just Stuart. And he's always just been Stuart to us. Yeah. I mean, that sounds funny, but he was, now he's our friend. Yeah, exactly. And he's, he's been great throughout the whole process. He really helped us throughout any problem that we might have. And, you know, I, I knew Stuart. I mean, he's, he was a little, I, I was really a fan of Collateral and Pirates of the Caribbean and that. So, you know, but it's just a pleasure to work with him. He was so helpful throughout the whole process and there was never a, a question he couldn't answer or, or a question stupid enough for him, <laughs> which was a lot of for me. <laughs> um, now, for both of you, this was effectively first motion picture roles, or certainly in, in, in these sort of leading roles. What were the most challenging things in the step up? I mean, you know, it sounds like it was probably a long way from Ramsey Street to where are we in this instance. Tell us about some of those challenges. I guess the main challenge is that when you go from television to film, particularly on a show like Neighbours, there's over 20 odd cast or something. So the onus is on everybody to get it right. And it's, it's you know, someone will pick up the slack if you don't. Where with us, we all have such specific roles to fulfill that it just, there was a lot of pressure to get it right because Neighbours is an original story every day. Well, not, you know, <laughs> original in the sense that it's not based on anything. And Tomorrow When the War Began is based on a book that's really dearly loved. So it was just terrifying to think that you might be doing a character that is, you know, so well known, a justice. For me, I mean, this 
film is on a scale far greater than anything I've ever done. I mean, I've done a lot of theatre and then a bit of TV as well as the Bell Rings Disney show. And which it's Disney, you know, it was fun, it was games, it was us mucking around. But then to get thrown in headfirst and something like this, it was fun but it was daunting as well. I mean, on top of that pressure of, you know, having to uh, live up to these characters that have been loved for so many years. But as soon as we started filming, I think all that just went out the window and we really just started to have fun as a group and really play around with these characters. So that all those sort of walls sort of crumbled down. I want to ask about the group. I mean, there were seven or, depending on how you count it, seven or eight yeah. very talented, young, aspiring actors together. Uh, how did that work? There must have been at times some tensions. No, that went with us. I mean, I know that sounds completely false, yeah. but because a lot of the time I think we were either all in big scenes together or it was about my interaction with them, yeah. if you know what I mean, because yeah. it's all from any perspective. So we never really got an opportunity to have any rivalries, I don't think, because it was just a case of wanting to make a good film and wanting to work together. Of course we got each other's nerves at times, but like it was, there were those instances were far and few between. And we lived together pretty much on an offset. We were staying in the same hotel on location, so everyone was a door down. So we, I don't know, it was, I guess it was really grateful that we got along, because or else it would have been a really long, yeah, long Yeah, but now we got along too well, which I thought was weird. Yeah, as well, that's <laughs> weird. Yeah. Caitlin Dennis, many thanks, and I hope the film does well on its release. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much.